Best way to describe this flight is chaotic. She says it took an unruly turn. We know holiday travel can be a nightmare, but for the passengers aboard Southwest Airlines flight 192 on November 26th. I just started hearing someone screaming help very loudly. This was the sound they heard before chaos. Charnay says it happened around 30 minutes into her flight from Hoppy Airport to Columbus, Ohio. She was singing gospel songs really loud and was saying she's not worthy. Um, but I didn't know what was going on. According to court documents, this woman attempted to open a rear exit door on the airplane. While 37,000 feet in the air, flight attendants and passengers worked to wrestle the woman to the ground. According to police, that's when the woman bit a person trying to restrain her on their thigh. It was a scary situation. The flight made an emergency landing in Little Rock, Arkansas. The woman was arrested and she told investigators Jesus told her to open the plane door. Reports show she told them she had anxiety and became very anxious and normally would not have done anything like this. I was just glad that everyone made it safe. Could I have finally found a good explanation as to what's happening here in these airports and these airplanes? You are now within minutes of horror because we're going to be looking at voice to skull technology. Now I do want to state I have been working intensively on this project Bluebeam video and I absolutely love it because I get to explain step by step and there are four steps when it comes to project Bluebeam. I am on the third step how this is possible, how we do have the technology to create something like Project Bluebeam. Now, you may not believe the Project Bluebeam theory, how there's this one world government ready to control the masses through a fake stage alien invasion, but the technology behind this is indeed very real. What they are capable of, even going all the way back to the 1960s Vietnam, where they were having the enemy hearing spirits inside their head is very terrifying given the fact also how far we have come along in technology. But as I have been doing research into Project Bluebeam, I have stumbled upon something that you might actually want to see. Going all the way back to 2008, the Army yanked a very suspicious Voice to Skull Devices website. The Army's very strange webpage on Voice to Skull weapons has been removed. It was strange it was even there and it's even stranger that it's gone. And if you Google it, you'll see the entry for Voice to Skull Device. But if you click on the website, the link is gone. But this entry is still available on the Federation of American Scientists website, which reads, Non-Lethal Weapon, which includes, 1. A Neural Electromagnetic Device, which uses microwave transmission of sound into the skull of persons or animals by way of pulse-modulated microwave radiation. And two, a silent sound device which can transmit sound into the skull of person or animals. Note, the sound modulation may be voice or audio subliminal messages. One application of voice to skull is used as an electronic scarecrow to frighten birds in the vicinity of airports. Isn't that such an odd coincidence that they are using voice to skull technology that can allow people or animals to hear voices? and subliminal messages, perhaps the voice of God or demons inside airports. Now, I have noticed an odd trend when it comes to these very bizarre airport stories or airplane stories, is that most of these panic attacks that do happen on these flights are pre-takeoff, meaning these planes, these passengers are still in the vicinity of these airports. It is also not outside the realm of possibility that the planes themselves could be equipped with some kind of voice to skull technology as well. One person even designed how this technology was even doable back in 1974 using frequency sound. A frequency transmitter can produce vertical lines in one short pulse of microwave signal at a frequency to which the human brain is sensitive. Then the brain converts the train of microwave pulses 
back to an audible voice. There is no conscious defense possible against this hypnosis. So we have a Federation of American Scientists that links a website that connects to the government, which connects to voice to skull technology being used inside airports. It is not outside the realm of possibility they are using this technology to target certain individuals to cause them to go crazy on these planes, inside these airports, to make airplane travel scarier than ever. As of 2023, we are just seeing an explosion of people hearing and talking about gods and demons, seeing gods, seeing demons, seeing ghosts and people that are not real on these planes. So far, when it comes to the news, the only mode of transportation that this is happening on are air travel, are airplanes, because the powers that be no longer want people to fly, because they are saying things like, well, air travel airplanes are causing very negative effects against the climate. You target a few of these individuals causing them to be frightened, having them wanting to escape airplanes and going berserk on airplanes, and now you have a situation where airplanes are absolutely terrifying to fly on. But if they do have this technology inside airports causing people to hear things, then it's also very possible they do have the technology to cause people to see things as well, to completely lose their mind, and they actually do. The government has a website called the National Library of Medicine. There's an article which states implications of neurological directed energy weapons for military medicine. Now, I have spoken about this article once before in quite a few of my videos, but back in 2016, there has been an increase in reported cases of intelligence officers and diplomats hearing pulsing sounds and experiencing neuropsychologic and cognitive symptoms. People are not only claiming to hear voices, but they're also seeing things that are not there as well, and experiencing symptoms, intense symptoms, that manifest its way similar to traumatic brain injury, but without enticing trauma. One of the main symptoms of traumatic brain injury is auditory and visual hallucinations. Investigations of these incidents suggest reasons to be concerned that a specific type of neural weapon may be the cause of a directed energy weapon, a do, neural weapons that target the brain to influence cognition and behavior that are leading to a new domain of warfare, neural warfare. These neural weapons and these direct energy weapons have been linked to voice to skull technology, making many people believe that they are being gang stalked. There is also a very strong connection and theory that many of these shooters that create these horrible events that cause a massive loss of life are also being targeted by these direct energy weapons as well, because many of these shooters claim to hear voices inside their heads mainly demons. What's going on today, bro? Yeah, the de demons, man. Demons? Voices. Yeah, no problem. Yeah. Voices. Voice voices and demons? Where are the voices? Based on family accounts, a source with knowledge of the investigation says Aaron Alexis had trouble sleeping in recent years, was hearing voices in his head. Law enforcement sources say he made contact with two VA hospitals for psychological issues. The man I responsible for the Paducah school shootings told a parole board he still hears voices 25 years later. Mm -hmm. So we can say what's happening here are demons or people off their meds or one their 15 minutes of TikTok fame. But are we really going to ignore the fact that the government is fully aware that this technology does exist inside airports? Said to scare birds, but I am now believing that this is being used to scare people, that they are using people to scare people. We know that they do play with mind control technology. MK Ultra is very real. As I pointed out a few times on the government CIA website, they have admitted to MK Ultra, Project MK Ultra. They said they stopped Project MK Ultra in the late 70s, which nobody believes. But you have to ask yourself, even though Project MK Ultra came to an end, what exactly replaced MK Ultra? They may no longer be mentally and physically abusing people or feeding them with drugs like LSD, but now they could be using technology against us and targeting our brain. This technology has very limited evidence that connects back to anybody, but they are trying to blame Russia for these direct energy weapons. Even though the United States has admitted to using MK Ultra and mind control techniques on American citizens, they're still trying to blame Russia 
for this new wave of technology that is targeting United States citizens. I also do find it odd that how in every one of these bizarre plane stories, almost every one of these stories anyway, that these people who are having these panic attacks on these flights are always directly taken to a mental hospital and they're kept there and they're never heard from again, including the Russian man, the Chinese man, and even Tom Cowling. Like George Bush Jr. famously said, There's an old saying in Tennessee, I know it's in Texas, probably in Tennessee, that says, fool me once, shame on, shame on you. It fooled me, we can't get fooled again. The more I research about Project Bluebeam, the more I realize how much this theory connects to everything that's going on in the world today. Serge Manas was just too far ahead of his time to see a lot of these plans go into fruition, to see a lot of these technologies being made today. But if you do want to see that video, please do subscribe. In any case, thank you so much for watching. If you do like this channel and you want to see more, please do subscribe as well. Once again, thank you so much for your support.